So I finally decided that it's uh, time to do some accuracy tests since the weather's finally warmed up. It's a G code. This is the part here, just the basic, you know, hex, round, and then a square. <clears throat> Got it set up. Just gonna run it here on the machine. Quarter inch two flute end mill. I'm only gonna run this one dry since I've got a coolant link. And then here you can see the tool path on the machine itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it, see what we get. Yeah, I know I haven't gotten anything better than this stupid plastic to keep the uh, the chips from flying back. Uh, not much I can do since the spindle would uh, crash into any sheet metal, unless I enclose the whole machine more like a like a more modern VMC. So, anyways, let's go ahead and run this, see what we get. <clears throat> Making a good little chip there. Making a good little chip there. Feeds and feet seem to be all right. Surface finish seems pretty good too. Even though this is just a cheap Chinese, you know, end mill. High speed steel, of course. Because budgets. Looking pretty good so far. This is, by the way, 1018. So fairly free machining material. Here you can see the adapter coming through. And I put some uh, oil down to aid. And I uh, think this, uh, this garage is going to be filled with oil by the end of this oily smoke that is nice little chip see it's kind of got some yellow tinge now that I added the oil but that's normal for uh, oil to kind of brown the chips I don't know how well that comes around the camera but nice speeds nice speeds I bumped up the spindle speed a bit you know to assist just finishing up the adapter now that's the square that it's on Gonna come over and finish up that round. It is really hard to see that on camera right now. So uh, here we got it over on the surface plate. I had to take a break yesterday. I needed to, to get some professional help on this one. Um, not engineering, mind you, but uh, men mental health. Uh, the frustration is really getting to me. It's a bit of a joke. Um, but do note that Machining or rebuilding machines will be frustrating. Um, no, I did speak to an engineer in all actuality uh, at work. Um, because some of these numbers are weird. So this one it would have been oriented like this in the machine. That would be Y positive. This is Y negative. The only reason I know that is the hex was on this side and the rectangle was on the other side. And I uh, had a little minor... Uh, accident when uh, the tool was coming off the square and canceling cutter comp it came and gouged into that just a bit you know not too bad it'd be bad if this was like uh, a part we were actually making for someone but for what we need it for it will still kind of work so remember so any axis measured from this point is our y axis because this is Y, so how many rotations the uh, machine would have taken from this point to that point. That's responsible for Y, and um, the dimension responsible that the X was responsible for would be this face to that face. And this should be a half inch square. Now, keep in mind, not all these dimensions are perfect. Um, it was a Chinese end mill. I've had Chinese end mills that were off, you know, maybe... I don't know, five thou at most in their diameter. It's kind of weird. It was almost like it was a regrind. Actually, I wonder if they did send me a regrind now that I say that. But anyways, this was not a bad end mill, as you can see, right there at 5,000. That's, or 500,000, I should say, which is half an inch. Here you go. Here is our Y, or what would be our X. You know, well, off maybe half a thou. These are calibers. I don't trust them 100%. I could be putting more pressure on this. I did want to run these on the CMM at work. Uh, didn't find the time today. Uh, didn't want to stay over to do it. So, 
Here we go. Inch and inch and three thousandths. I know that's backwards for you folks, so but here's the concerning part. It's not round. It's always larger in this direction than it is in this direction. That's consistent. That's how it's been with this machine since I rebuilt it. So there's a discrepancy of let me see. Two thou over an inch, three thou over an inch. Oh, almost ten thou. Well, about ten thou. So kind of annoying discrepancy. Um, now this is what I had to go to work and ask about the engineers, and they said that it is possibly either the mounting for the ball screws is just loosened up over time, so I got to get in there and tighten up, or it could be the timing belt. So in other words, the uh, servo would be moving except it hasn't actually moved the table and so it moves that three thou and then the table moves so it's almost like a little bit of backlash uh you can remedy that in fusion 360 there's a backlash calculator it'd be better to sure it up now this is troubling this this hex right here it's supposed to be a one inch hex there we go you know, you know it's there it's it's not perfect let me get a better and I know this is going to be upside down. Oh, maybe, maybe a thou, maybe two thou. You know, under something like that. Not bad. And that's probably, you know, about as good as you'll get. Now this side, I do recollect, was more of a troublesome. It's out by at least two thou. So our rounds aren't good. Our hexes are better. You know, a little worse for wear, but not the worst. So we are getting some pretty consistent accuracies. I did take the height, uh, height gauge and measure this. These are supposed to be 100 thou from this face to these faces. And it's within 2 thou, so, which isn't bad. Um, I can feel some tool slippage. In other words, there's steps. So that tool was being pressed back in. To the spindle as we were going i probably didn't have it as tight as i ought to or um i actually brought the quill down it is a bridgeport clone head uh, if you would it's a bridgeport clone spindle and uh, being a bridgeport clone spindle i get a quill so instead of touching it off like i normally would i just brought the quill down and locked it in place and ran it that way i really should have you know ran the jam nut to sure it up a bit more but anyways I'm not happy with this. 10 thou, eh, it's an interpolation. It's a home shop machine. It's not horrible. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, machines that can really interpolate well are few and far between and usually cost you a pretty penny anyways. So that's not the end of the world. What is the end of the world, and I'm going to have to test this in the future, is possibility of thread milling might be hampered by this you know, huge uh deviation now it might be it might be uh much lesser in smaller diameters in other words it might not translate down to a smaller diameter so if i was uh thread milling a you know maybe a, a five a five sixteenths eighteenth thread you know on a on a fixture it might not be the end of the world so 